why is now a good time to, to start a new chapter in zombies? Why now? Well, for multiple reasons. First one being that the ether story we've been telling for the last 10 years. So that is incredibly complicated, incredibly involved, and actually our fan base love that about it. But there's a part of our community who've come in a little bit later on. It's almost unfair to them to be able to kind of jump into that 10 year story and kind of find their footing. So we felt that now is a perfect time to start a new story. The time is right because as we, were making, as we were making the 10 year story, we'd have ideas that we'd like, oh, we could put that in, but it felt like we were jamming it in. So we had all these great ideas that started just stacking up on one side. The ether story got to a certain point, which was kind of critical. I can't kind of go into too much detail, but uh -huh. I was like, okay, now is a good time. We've got all these great ideas here. Let's start afresh. And that means we can also not only kind of cater to our 10 year fan base, but also a new fan base that's starting as well. Is this, are the two stories connected in any way? Is it a clean break? They are not connected. They're not connected. <laughs> <coughs> They're not connected in any way. They are two separate stories completely. So no really one believes me, by the way. No one believes me. I've said this out now multiple times. I even said it to your camera. Uh -huh. I've said it multiple times. They are not connected. All right. Will you please also tell people that there are no secret messages and codes in this video? I could not say that. <laughs> Damn it. Chase, you killed it. So how big is like the story focused audience for zombies? Do you have um, any data or any way to frame it? Because it's a passionate community. I just have no sense of how many people were really giving a shit about the details of this stuff. I mean, we don't really kind of talk about numbers or look at numbers in that way. What we do look at is the kind of volume of interest in a, in a, in a strange way. So uh, that's probably more of an Activision question on the exact numbers. But what I would say is that every time we've brought out an installment, the fan base has grown. And we've seen that by the number of fans who turn up to our events, the kind of uh, rabid interest in the things that we kind of do and the things that we put out. Um, and then also, you know, every so often we get an indication based on our online numbers that we kind of get through that, okay, the, the, the number's increasing, it's getting bigger. You know, we can tell it from the, our, uh, the, the weight on our systems that we run when we run the, uh, the zombie game. How would you describe the zombies team in general? What's kind of the mood of this subdivision of Treyarch? Um, it's very anti-authority. It's very rock and roll. Um, it's highly energized, highly motivated. A lot of my time I spend um, actually putting the brakes on certain ideas. I know that sounds makes me sound like a buzzkill, but we've got such a passionate group who want to kind of put stuff in. Um, and part of my job is to say, yes on that, yes on that, no on that one, we'll hold that one for later. Because they're just, uh, it's a very approachable mode from a designer point of view. And it's also the kind of mode where designers, animators, sound engineers, artists, all there's an avenue for all those interests. In a lot of other kind of IPs or other kind of areas of the game, you have to hold on onto the message very strictly. With zombies, as long as you're kind of in the right channel, uh, any kind of angle of creativity can work. So that allows me to just take just kind of crazy ideas in. And as long as it's kind of fitting with the storyline that uh, Craig uh, Houston, my lead writer and myself, kind of work with, uh, then we'll let it in. Now again, we don't actually spell out to our team every aspect of the storyline either. So that's why they just throw ideas in and then we'll say, oh, that fits, or that doesn't fit. Um, so it's an interesting way how we actually develop it internally as well. Do you ever second guess well, how much you actually understand the storyline yourself? Are you ever just in the shower in the morning going like, what was that detail again? Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, and that's why we have a writing department. We actually have uh, one of our guys in the writing department who was responsible for putting together um, the zombie timeline, um, which is this huge kind of sprawling, um, I would say mess, but it's kind of map of, of story information we've done over the kind of 10 years. and both Craig and I will go and see him to actually ask him if an idea we're, we're having fits um, because he has it all stored in his head. Because we have to go and sit down and look it all up and double check it. And he can say, yep, yes, Max's was there at that time at this, at this point. <laughs> so it just, yeah. from a presentation, it feels like an experimental art narrative project between you and the community that just happens to be funded by one of the biggest video game franchises in the world. Yeah, don't, don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're sitting off camera, but don't, don't tell them. They'll realize one day what we're doing. <laughs> Which, and that's the thing that we love about it. You know, uh, it's, it's true. There's, um, there's this kind of danger, this, this, this edge that we try and ride on with zombies, which is pushing the boundaries. And it's the kind of thing you shouldn't be playing. It's the kind of thing that we shouldn't be making. And that's what excites us about it. And that's that kind of attitude, that, that mentality, is really the spirit of game developers in a lot of senses, no matter what their kind of project they're doing, what background they have. Uh, and Zombies is the, the perfect outlet for that. Can you talk a little bit about where Nine came from? Um, no. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so Nine is part of our new story called the Chaos Story. 
Um, and this is our, our new story to kind of let people kind of come in from the, from the ground floor. So it's a very exciting time to join the, the zombie community um, because if, uh, if the ether story is anything to go by, in a couple of years' time, it's going to get more and more complicated. So jump in now, kids. Um, <coughs> it's a fast train. Jump on. Here we go. <laughs> so nine is a point in the story that our gang, so that's uh, Diego, Shaw, uh, Scarlet, and Bruno, are, are on a quest to discover answers. That's as specific as you're going to get out of me. Um, and they've found themselves in this cave to which a mysterious voice is, is saying, to, to kind of find your answers, you must breathe deeply of these vapors. Uh, they do so, and then they appear to have traveled back in time to a different location uh, where some sort of ancient uh, ritual is taking place, and they have to su fight to survive. You said yesterday. That was almost like that, my marketing line straight you out. Really, there. yeah, it's regrettable, <laughs> but you hit them all. <laughs> like, yesterday you said that a lot of the zombie stuff comes from spare bits, a lot of stuff yes. that the team is working on. Yes. What are the spare bits that were turned into nine? I don't understand how those can be spare bits. So. And, and like we talked about yesterday, um, yes, the mentality of zombies has been the spare bits, and we keep that as part of our DNA. The uh, positive side, the plus side to zombies becoming more and more popular, uh, and then hence getting more and more support, we get a bigger team now than we've ever had previously, is um, we now get to spend some more resources on unique assets. So, so Nine is a brand new creation in terms of its space and its aesthetics and all this kind of stuff. But what we try to do is, ideas that we have in other parts of the game we'll then retheme and bring back in to keep that dna being part of it it's nice to kind of keep that mentality but also now with a bigger budget in terms of having more assets we can kind of request we can put our own stuff in do you see it as an homage in any way to that game that vicarious visions was working on a while ago the call of duty roman wars that was cancelled um not really uh, but i i you know his thing i uh, like i said yesterday as well I, I try to keep myself in a bubble of these things because there's so many different ideas kind of going on and the world's richer than... It really comes from the story we want to tell and the things that we feel are cool. Um, that may sound cliched, but um, we were thinking to ourselves, okay, what do we normally do with zombies? We're normally fighting in dark, dank places with the kind of horror aspect. Okay, let's go full daylight. Okay, let's go full daylight. Okay, what's kind of cool? Oh, fighting in gladiatorial times, you know, with lots of kind of zombie, you know, zombie horror running around. Those things just all kind of tick boxes for us. You know, in the same way, you know, when we've done, you know, the uh, uh, Stalingrad with dragons and so forth. It's just, this element seems appealing. Let's add this element in. Let's see what this kind of does. Um, yeah. And, you know, we don't want to go to the same place twice either. Creatively, spiritually, location-wise. And when we do, it's because we have something new to tell. We've got something different that we want to kind of put a skew on it. And that would lead into something like, Blood of the Dead. Right. Perfect there. Yeah, you really you hit it off. <laughs> All right, so what's the story set up for Blood of the Dead? We are following the Primus gang. Um, we, have, we have two kind of gangs. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. Two gangs. There's the Ultimus gang, which is the original four characters that started way back when. Uh, and then Origins, which was Black Ops 2, we introduced the Primus gang. Blood of the Dead is connected to our quest to find the answers for the blood vials. And that's as much as I can tell you. Okay. Is it, uh, is it the most complex narratively of the batch at launch here? Um, it is. It's probably the most complex. It's definitely one of the most involved main quests that we have. That's almost like a challenge to the community, me saying that. Okay. It's one of the more involved ones. Uh, it's definitely packed for lots of side Easter egg quests as well. Um, but if you're a true hardcore zombie enthusiast as well, uh, we have a, a map called Classified um, that... Um, is, is more complex on how far back in our storyline it is. So you've got, you've got blood that's very complex if you're kind of up to date. And then if you're really hardcore, you've got classified that kind of goes way back into the, uh, the annals of our uh, zombie history. Uh, so if you can make sense of that, then that means you're hardcore and you've been following it for the last 10 years. <laughs> oh my God. So don't start with Blood of the Dead necessarily. That's for the, well, the old timers. Here's the thing. We're, we're actually interested because... So all the maps are new user friendly. You can set it to easy. Or you can go into custom mutations and set those things down and kind of, you know, lighten it up for yourself. Um, so I would say any map is approachable on day one for, for the newbie or for, for a hardcore person. If I, was, if I was to recommend, if you said, okay, I, I like to play normal difficulty, which one should I start with? Um, I would say that probably the most allowing one is probably nine to begin with. Okay. I would then say, in terms of kind of newbie kind of approaching it, I'd then say it's probably blood in the middle. And then I think you've got voyage. And that's because it's a spatial thing. And actually, interestingly enough, main quests 
would have different difficulty. Like the spatial complexity of moving around is different to the complexity of the Easter egg or main quests. The interesting thing about releasing so many maps on day one, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think it's fair to say we'll have the most number of maps here in, in our release year than we've ever done. Uh, so stay kind of tuned all the way to the end of this year. The community is going to be split this time because normally what happens is we release a map and millions of people descend upon one map and brute force solve the map. Mm -hmm. That's what happens every year. They can't do that this time because there's four maps coming out. Smart. So we have no clue what's going to actually happen. They may all decide to descend on one map or they may get fragmented and hence things may take longer. I don't think it's going to take much longer. I think you're going to be stunned. I, I, so every time there's a prediction and there's a kitty here at Treyarch about how long it's going to be for an Easter egg or a main quest to be solved. Uh, we've been wrong every single time. I've personally been wrong. I've, I've lost tens of dollars um, <laughs> um, due to being incorrect. So we are interested to see what happens this time, whether the community all bands together and attacks one map at a time, yeah. or if they're going to get fragmented and divided across the four maps. With the community tools, uh, could you see expanding that more and more in the future and letting people upload their own stuff? It's really interesting. So, you know, talking about like, you know, if you have a custom mutation, saving that off, being able to share that with your friends, these are all things that we're talking about. Again, based on the interest, based on how people are engaging with the game, we're going to keep on supporting all the way through our season and adding new features. And certain kind of features that we've talked about, we're going to expand further or roll out and release as we kind of go. So that's, that's unique from how we've done Zombies in the past. In the past, it's been, here's your release, now there's an update every so often and then you go into the DLC maps. Yeah. This time, we're actually keeping our team full-time engaged and actually rolling in more and more features. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's really interesting. Whenever we put out a beta, it's always like, well, here's the leaks. Here's the top leaks from, from you know, Black Ops this year. Mm -hmm. You never know, you know, some of those leaks may be future releases rather than day one releases. They all get excited about stuff when they find something in the code, but you never know, especially in this project. Okay. Do you see an end goal for zombies? Like, you, you emphasize Killing it. you. I understand that. No, 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 no. But conceptually, it seems like it came from the community. Mm -hmm. the, the spark was ignited by the community. With the community tools, do you want to grow that to a place eventually where you can just hand it all back to the community of, you guys make your own stuff, upload your own stories, it's yours anyway? I think, I mean, as long as the community's got interest in, in what we're doing, then there's a bright future and keep on doing zombie stuff. In terms of the power they want, if, that was, if we were hearing that loud and clear, absolutely. The reason why we put custom mutations in, the reason why we did the Treyarch uh, authenticity stamp system was all to encourage more community-based engagement, right? Mm -hmm. I heard complaints about, I've done this, how do I prove this? You know, they're currently having to share multiple hours of video files to prove that they got the highest round or right. they did something without something and then some poor guy has to sit there and scrub through the video. So giving them the tools, giving them the ways to kind of compete with each other, engage with each other, have different kind of competitions, um, seems like giving back to the community what they were all naturally doing. You know, I'd hear about first room challenges, for example, something that we never put in the game, never intended. And what they do is they play the game and they won't open the doors. They'll stay in the first room and see how high they can get on rounds. So with the custom mutation system, we actually bake that in so that you can actually manufacture that. You can create your own first room channel challenge within the system and then get a certificate to say that you did it. Mm -hmm. So rather than having to have these huge files. What can you say about the zombie rush mode? What is that all about? One of the modes we did back in Black Ops 2 uh, it was called Grief. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of interest in that. I've, I've stated on record before that um, Grief would only come back at the point when I was happy with it. I think our first implementation was good, um, but I felt there was, there was distance to be, to be taken there. And so that's a still ongoing thought. But um, rush mode is something that we thought we'd give the community that uh, allows them to compete with each other in a more kind of arcadey fashion. So what it means is that you start off, you're playing, all the weapons are free, uh, the doors kind of unlock as you kind of go along. So you don't have to worry yourself with the complexities of the zombie mode. So it's easy to kind of jump into, but allows, you know, if, the, if we're playing together, it allows us to kind of cl collect these zombie points. And as we collect them, you see your name almost like a kind of racing game. You see your name kind of going up the, the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. So this kind of friendly competition about beating the other person. I see a lot of people sliding in and grabbing the points before the other person. It's a, an easier, barrier for entry and then it's competitive with their friends in a more casual way. Yeah. Uh, grief was very much kind of hardcore like you're really trying to stiff the other person. This one's a little bit more casual. Um, it reminds me a little bit of um, remember Gauntlet back in the day you know it's kind of 
there's a friendly competition there, but grabbing the power up or grabbing the, the ammo before the other person, there's a little bit of friendly competition. So that's what essentially Rush Mode did. How are you feeling overall about starting a new story? Does it feel like with the Vapor concept wide open, you yep. could go anywhere with this? Is yes. it an exciting time in the Zombies team? Absolutely. I mean, uh, again, being careful about not giving spoilers, but uh -huh. um, the way we're dealing with history, the way we're dealing with mythology, means that the door's wide open for wherever we need to go, whatever we want to do. As, uh, as, as creative individuals, that's the most exciting thing. You know, we, and we did that with, with, uh, with the Ether story. Mm -hmm. um, I think the main difference here with the Chaos story is that the way that it's initiated in the world and the way it also cleans itself up means that our understanding of history is preserved. One thing, if you look at the Ether story, is that if that was actually taking place, all the governments of the world would be incredibly aware of all these zombies running around. <laughs> The way that the, uh, the care story works, it kind of happens, this kind of trial is released, mm -hmm. and then after the trial is finished by everyone dying or them completing it, it cleans everything up. So what it means is we can preserve the normal passage in our understanding of history, but kind of insert it in the shadows, which is very much the Black Ops way. You know, when we started Black Ops 1, I think our marketing line was something like, you know, what you know is the truth, you know, isn't the truth or whatever. It's yeah. the, what you do in the shadows. And that's essentially what the chaos story is as well now. It means we can tell these zombie stories, have these fantastical things happening, but as long as no one's there to record it, then we can clean it all back up again and the world can carry on. So it's very interesting. Because it's going, not really happening. Because it's not because no one saw it. Right. Or no one's okay. aware of it. So something like the Titanic, yes, we all we're all aware of the disaster of the Titanic. Well, we're putting a twist on it and saying, yes, there was a zombie outbreak on there. Well, who's there to dispute me? You know, no one. So uh, that's how uh, <laughs> okay, so that's that means... how the chaos story works. Okay, so overall, bigger swings, crazier than anything you've done in the past? Is that the, is that the roadmap ahead? Uh, yes. It's crazy by its peak rather than by its spaghetti. So Ether is complex because it's a multidimensional universe plus time travel uh, plus, you know, uh, and multiple casts and, and multiple timelines. This one's crazy by, it runs in a semi-straight line, if you will, um, but the insanity can get a lot higher. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> that's a terrible description. No, you got it. Well, okay. Why is it called nine? Um, that's a very good question. Yeah. Answer when you play the game. To be discovered. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's normally never on day one, I'll tell you that. Some of these ideas, um, you might have to be six months to a year later before you realize the significance of something like that. Really? Oh, yeah. And this is one of those cases? This is one of those cases. What would you say, finish a sentence, I guess, is the core of mm. the question. Like, you know, this year, Zombies is the most blank it's ever been. I hope that's not a statement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the review headline. Um, I, would, I would change the sentence slightly for gra grammatical reasons. Uh -huh. I would say it's the, it's the deepest Zombies experience we've ever produced. Deepest. Uh, most, I also, is that what that means? Most, and I would also say most customizable. And I would also then say most supported as well going forward into the future there we go. so i completely broke the rules like any good game developer i'm taking your rules and perverting them <laughs> <laughs>